Good morning, good morning. Happy Monday, everyone. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and continue on with the recreation of our October stamp of the month cards today. Um, now, you guys know I'm close to my heart world. I always want to just go over this really briefly uh, in case we have anyone that's joining us for the very first time, which we have had a lot of new viewers lately. I'm so, so, so excited, you guys. Thank you so much for um, giving me just a few minutes of your morning. Um, in Close to My Heart World, you guys know that we have a campaign every single month called the Stamp of the Month, and it means that... We have an exclusive uh, limited edition stamp set that's only available during the month that it's featured. So this is the October stamp of the month, thanks and giving. And you guys can actually purchase it for a regular price, or my favorite way to get it is when you place any $50 order on my website, you can buy it for only $5. So it's a great savings of $13.95. So if you're kind of thrifty like me, this should speak to your heart. Um, but I thought that this stamp set lended itself well to scrapbooking. So of course, me being a rebel, I wanted to use it for card making. And and that is what I have done this month. Now you guys know that when you get the stamp of the month for only $5 uh, from the Close to My Heart Warehouse, you are then going to get a pre-cut stamp of the month kit from me. This is a promotion that I offer uh, to my customers. This is not going to ship with your Close to My Heart order. This will come directly from me with the rest of your Happy Mail. And Happy Mail are just uh, free surprise gifts that I like to send my customers uh, to thank you for your order and to brighten your day a little bit. So um, you'll receive this with the, the rest of your Happy Mail. And it's a pre-cut five card kit this month. They're different every single month and you never know what uh, you're going to get. I already have November's designed. Good morning, Therese. I already have November's design and I cannot wait to share that with you guys next month. But you guys are going to get, um, I've basically done all the hard work for you. Each of the card patterns are already uh, cut out and, um, good morning, good morning, cut out and sorted for you. So all you have to do is stamp using your brand new stamp set, good morning Mandy, and assemble them uh, very, very quickly. Now you guys could do this on your own if you wish based on you can use the uh, files that you're also going to receive in your, e in your e um, inbox. These will be emailed to you and they have all of the um, assembly photos so that you can just put those cards quickly together as a pu uh, like a puzzle. They also have the recipe listings down here that give you all of the measurements if you want to recreate a few of them. And so you'll be able to assemble these cards with no trouble on your own if you choose to do that. Then if you would like to recreate a lot of cards using your brand new stamp set, you have a full cutting guide that I've designed for you as well. So you'll receive all of this emailed directly to you. So you guys can choose to either put the cards together on your own or you can wait uh, for my online virtual class where we will just go and assemble all of these in real time. We have a good night of fellowship together. There's lots of giveaways during the class and the only thing that you have to do to be admitted into the class is um, get your stamp set for only $5. So there's a really great uh, number of resources that I want to provide you guys so that you can get a lot of miles, a lot of usage out of your brand new stamp set. And we do this every single month. So you guys, I encourage you Check back in every single month to see what is new with Close to My Heart and the brand new free, free pre-cut kit that you guys can get. And you can find them all over at the blog, uh, just crazyblessed.blogspot.com. So let's give you a really quick um, up-close look at the cards. These are the actual same exact cards that my customers are receiving free this month whenever they purchase the kit. And so uh, one of the things that is so, of what we were doing that's so fun, this is the one we're recreating today. Totally different spin on it. We're using the very same pattern, the very same sizes of paper, but a totally different spin today on this card. And we're using sand from the beach. Um, I cannot wait to show you guys that one. We have already recreated a couple of these in previous videos. And so if you guys want to see the process on doing that, you can just scroll down the business page or go up to the video tab near the top and you'll be able to see the process video on all of these. So this is the original card. Morning, Chris. Good morning, good morning. This is the original card. This is my recreation. Again, you can find this video right here on the business page. Um, very same pattern, you guys. I've used the very same cutting guide, the very same recipe sheet. All I did was just changed up the pattern on this one, changed up a little bit of the bling. So I want you guys to see that you can take that same cutting guide uh, that I'm providing for you and get an entirely different look using the very same stamp set. So this one was super, super fun. Uh, my very favorite colors in the 
whole wide world, the black and white with the different shades of the teal. Here is, if I can get my phone to focus, here is the liner. Um, I've been doing some black card bases because, to tell you the truth, um, somehow I've managed to run out of the white daisy card bases. I have them on order, but I don't have them yet, and I'm not going to let that slow my process. So uh, we're going to keep creating cards. We're just going to improvise and use some cardstock. So I use a black cardstock, and when you do that, of course, you need to add a liner uh, to it. It, so you can see your message written on the inside. So I just added a little bit of white cardstock. And of course, the inside matches the outside. I think this one turned out so cute. This is one of my favorite cards I've made in a long time. <laughs> so, and then the other one, this is the one that we rec recreated on Saturday. Here is the original. Again, same uh, cutting guide, same size paper, same stamp set. We have just made a few little minute changes and gave it a brand new look. Now, I did, um, I did give you guys a tutorial on how to create this little 3D Look at that little guy right there, how he pops up there. Would that not bless your heart to get that in a card? I know it would bless mine, but watch this, the, my favorite part of this feature. It folds completely flat for mailing. How about that? Nice, right? So you can stick that thing in the mail and um, it probably won't even cost you any additional stamp and it's gonna pop right back up. It won't get all smashed and gnarled, but I just think it's super, super cute. Again, we've got the black cardstock base going. And, oops, look like my liner got a little, maybe I didn't, oh, I didn't. I cut my video short, apparently, and I didn't glue my liner in. But got a little bit of the matching bling and the matching pattern paper from the outside to just kind of tie in the inside and make it look purposeful uh, like we meant for it to match the outside, of course. So this is um, leading us into the video today. And again, you guys, if you want to see... Um, all of my original card designs and um, you want to see how you can get the pre-cut kit for free, just hop right over to the blog and the stamp of the month post is on the left sidebar near the top, okay? Stamp of the month is always in the left. The other workshops, the large workshops with the cutting guides are always in the right and you'll be able to find those from any page of the blog that you choose to visit. So hop over there if you guys want to see, but this is the one that we're recreating today and we incorporated a flip flap here because I thought it was so fun to add a photo to the card that served as a decorative element, but whenever you sent it to your recipient, they could very easily um, just pull it right out. So you didn't have to gnarl up your photo. You didn't have to rip it up off of the adhesive, um, take a chance of ruining it and that type of thing. So I thought that these little flip flaps might even be fun. You know, here in the Midwest, we have just had picture day at school and you always get those cool little um, teeny tiny exchange size uh, photos, or you could use the small wallets that you might want to give to family members, that kind of thing. So how fun would that be to create a card and use a flip flap so that you could incorporate a photo into the design element and not ruin the photo whenever they want to take it out, you know, put it on the refrigerator in a scrapbook album or something like that. So that's what um, kind of my th theory behind using the flip flap here. Today we're also going to create a card that uses a photo, but we're going to add the shaker feature and maybe a little bit of sand from the beach from our vacation last year. So I'm working on my mom's birthday card. At least I think this is going to be my mom's birthday card. I might find something that I like better. and um, But anyway, so far, this is going to be my mom's birthday card. Um, but this is totally fun. This is a picture of my kiddo when he got to visit the beach for the very, very first time uh, last year when we went to Florida. And so we had to do the whole bury him in the sand thing. And um, so we're going to use some sand from the beach in Florida, maybe some shells if they will uh, fit in here. But this is going to be a fun card today. And I can't wait to walk you guys through that. So... We are just going to go right ahead and assemble our card. Good morning, everyone who's hopping on. You guys bless my day when you hop on here. Thank you so, so, so much. So we're just going to go ahead and get all of this craziness out of the way. If I can find a place to put it. I'm going to go ahead and get all of this craziness out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and start assembling our card. We are going to use our post-it note trick. You guys are driving me, um, you're making me so um, so giggly with the post-it note trick. Let's see if we can get this on backwards. Um, I did not realize that not a lot of people knew the post-it note trick, so um, it's going to be fun to share with you guys again. So when you guys have pieces that, um, if you're like me and you cut your papers, they sometimes don't always line up, and it doesn't matter how quick, how easy or how um, pay much attention you pay to your paper trimmer, there's always a piece that's longer than the others. So um, when you place them directly onto a card base, which is what we're going to do here, it's really difficult to disguise those um, because you have a piece that's longer than the other and it's difficult to trim it off after it's already adhered down. So my trick is that I just grab a post-it note and the sticky note is right here on this side. 
And so what we're going to do is lay your sticky portion down and you're going to begin building your card pieces right on top of the sticky. So now the thing that's interesting about the sticky note, guys, is the reason why I like it so much is because, number one, the adhesive is already... <clears throat> is already on the little paper for you. Um, it's it, it's a, a low tack adhesive that you can pull up and adjust if you need to. And it also, oops, looks like we're gonna need another one because it's not quite long enough. Um, but you can, um, it's very thin. It's not going to add additional bulk or an additional layer to your uh, project and make it too, um, too bulky or too um, cumbersome in that way. So we're just adding another little one here. So I have some adhesive on this side. But this is going, my, my, my favorite reason for this trick is that, okay, so you guys are going to see, maybe you can see with my black background, that I have some pieces that are a little bit longer than the other ones. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to take this entire sheet right to our paper trimmer and we're just going to trim off the edge. And I try to be so careful and have all of my things over here on my desk, you guys. And of course I forgot my paper trimmer today. So we're just sticking it in here. We'll be able to trim it off super quickly all of our pieces will be completely flush with each other absolutely perfect so good morning everyone who is hopping on good morning good morning guys okay so Suze what did you do oh I know what I did guys hang on hang on a jiffy I had a thought and then my thought uh, changed part way through so hang on just one second one moment. I'm sorry. Did you guys think that I was going to be prepared today? Well, the joke may have been on you. I do try to be so prepared, you guys, and then my plan will change or I will attempt to create on the fly. And um, then it doesn't ever turn out the way that it's supposed to turn out. And well, you know, you this is not your first rodeo. You've seen this show before, right? Okay, so we have... Trim that down just a little bit so we have that really nice black border. And it's going to fit perfectly here. Oh my gosh, guys, sorry. I'm missing like all the comments on my phone. So if you have a question and I missed it, just um, shout again, please. And I will go back through and um, I will go back through and answer them. I'm so sorry. Got a little bit caught up on the word. I have had two cups of coffee this morning. And you would think that it's helping, but uh, yeah, clearly it is not. So. Go ahead and get all of these pieces ready to go right down here on our card base. And then we'll be able to start uh, creating the fun part, which, of course, you guys know is the... Um, oh, my gosh, that's a little bit crooked. Oh, my word. Stand by, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Is this is like the most train wreck of a crafting video you have seen all morning. Maybe all week. Hang on just a moment. Okay, someone told me the other day my videos are keeping it real. So I'm going with that, okay? We're keeping it real, guys. Keeping it real. Okay, hang on just a moment. I'm going to concentrate. We're going to get this done correctly. Can't give my mom a crooked birthday card. My father is an avid hunter. He loves to hunt. And um, so what I think I'm going to do with my next, when I create his birthday card, um, we're going to put one of the white tail bucks on here that are on one of our Cricut cartridges, and we're going to incorporate that into a shaker window. So I can't hardly wait to share that one with you guys. I think it'll be really perfect. Okay, so we have our base is ready to go. We will go right ahead, guys, and do the stamping portion. Remember, this is the one that we're recreating today. And what we're actually doing, as you can see is that we are um, we're changing we're changing the orientation we've changed the paper and we've slightly trimmed we've trimmed off because I love to have the border around the outside um, when we use the black and so in, we did trim off um, the very edge of our paper patterns but we are totally like this is hardly even going to be considered the very same card okay it's totally going to be different I'm very excited and the nerve-wracking part is that I never quite know what it's going to look like when we're done. It, it's kind of, it's really kind of nerve wracking to do it when people are watching. Uh, it's one thing to do it whenever you're by yourself in your craft studio, but when you have people watching you live, you just never know what kind of a train wreck is going to happen when you don't have a plan. So we're using the Remember This stamp image, and we are always, 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 good morning, Juanita and Suzanne. Thanks for hopping on, you guys. Happy Monday morning. 
Um, always, always we're using the Archival Black, you guys, because we're going to use the Peacock Green Shin Hand Marker, which matches perfectly with the Lagoon cardstock that we're incorporated into this card. So um, you always want to make sure whenever you guys are using um, the markers, watercolors, um, the shimmer brushes, anything that is that could potentially allow your ink to run or smear or smudge or anything like that, you really want to make sure that you use a permanent ink. And the Archival Black is just my absolute favorite. So um, if you guys do not have one of the permanent ink pads, I do encourage you, um, if you enjoy coloring, if you enjoy coloring uh, your images or using the watercolors or anything like that, I do encourage you guys to grab those. You will not be sorry. So we're going to try just really super, super quickly to get this colored right away and attempting to stay in the lines. Occasionally have some hand trimmers when, and they always kind of break out whenever I start coloring with my markers. But um, the Shin Hand markers, you guys, if you have never used these alcohol markers, they are quite fantastic. Now, I don't know how to do all of the, all that fancy schmancy blending and all that stuff that I'm just not smart enough to do. Um, I can just color like, like I learned whenever I was a little girl. <laughs> but we're not actually... Um, you're not actually wanting to color back and forth. Um, hey, good morning, Linda. Uh, like we did when we were little. I find that these markers are just like crazy, crazy. Um, they have a lot of, for lack of a better word, they have a lot of juice in them. So you, if you were to rest your marker down on your space, in like a half a second, you're going to have a great big blob, a humongous mess there uh, to cover up. And so I find that instead of really touching my marker down onto my cardstock uh, for a long time. I am just using kind of some really short, very quick strokes, some dots, that type of thing, um, because that you're still going to see that that color is going to bleed a little bit. So I usually will try to start in the inside, work my way out, an attempt, heavy on the word attempt, attempt to stay in the lines. My gosh, my hand is shaking now. Oh my word. This could be something that I probably next time will do before I turn the camera on guys so you guys don't have to watch the paint dry on the wall. Good morning Judy. Thank you for hopping on. Is I hope everybody's having a good Monday morning. We had a lot of rain over the weekend and we really needed it here in Missouri. We really really needed it. Um, it just makes work a little bit frustrating for those people that don't need rain to work. Uh, my husband is one of them, but, uh, the rain felt good and, uh, it's, we've got a nice, a nice pretty breeze blowing this morning. It is, however, still pretty cloudy, so we've got the cloud cover, but, um, I guess that's okay to keep the heat away. It's supposed to be a little bit warmer today than it was yesterday, and it was nearing 90 yesterday at my house. Okay, guys. You are now your crafting with me, Mandy? Oh my gosh, how fun! How fun! Thank you so much for hopping on, darling. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead. We have done the hard work. Let's go right ahead and work on our shaker window. Now, you guys have heard my shaker spiel before, but again, just in case we have some new people uh, joining us, we have these thin cut dies that you guys can see on page 135 of the idea book, um, and that's where you're going to find all the shaker uh, elements to create our very own shaker cards. Custom shaker cards, I might add. You can use any paper, any color, any pattern, any whatever. Make them all your own. It's very, very exciting. Um, you only need two mandatory products. You need the shaker thin cuts, which you get all four of these circles for only $21.95. Um, the uh, stitched circle frame, the large circle, and the custom confetti dies that you're going to see in a moment. All four of those are only $21.95, so it's a crazy awesome savings. Um, you're going to also need the shaker window foam and the acetate circles that you guys are going to see here again in just a moment. I'm going to show you how all of those work together. And with just those two products, you guys can create tons of shaker cards. Um, you don't need the uh, loose sequins that go in the middle, but you uh, could have those if you would like. Today, of course, as I mentioned, we're going to use uh, the sand and we're going to use, maybe if I can get them to fit some seashells and um, a few of the confetti stars. So we're not going to use any of the sequins today, but um, I think that I'm going to 
double stack my foam windows because these are what is going to give us the dimension portion of the window. So I am attempting, heavy on the word attempt, going to add in some of these little teeny tiny seashells that we found on the beach. Um, and so I think in order to add the seashells, I'm going to need um, two of the windows to make it uh, the depth high enough so that my shaker will still kind of move around and flutter around and that kind of thing. Good morning, sweetie. My husband is watching. <laughs> There's no telling what kind of honoriness he's up to today, y'all. Um, so we are going to a machine to cut with. Don't have one. Um, Lavanda, so you do not have um, a cuddle bug or a big shot. Um, are the two, there are several different brands on the market. I have a cuddle bug. Um, they're not too awfully expensive. This is not an actual electronic machine. This is one of the like the hand crank machines. I'm going to grab it and I'm just going to stick it underneath the camera so you can see it. This is what we're talking about. It's just got a hand crank here. It doesn't plug into the wall. You don't need. My husband says he wished he knew how to whistle on here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love you. I hope your day is going good. <laughs> um, but, Lavanda, it, I don't, these are not, like, don't, don't, um, if you're not familiar with them, do not misunderstand it with a Cricut or one of the electronic die-cutting machines. Um, so this is just one of the old-fashioned hand crank ones. Um, but this is going to be the only two uh, the only two products that you guys are actually going to need to create the shaker windows. So we have I have already just to save the time I've already cut out the pieces we're going to need for this shaker window. So we're just going to go ahead and begin building. Now here is the black frame. This is our stitched circle frame that was in the die. This circle of the code man we cut out with the large circle die okay and then you're gonna see the star confetti in action here in just a moment so we're just gonna go right into creating our foam our, our uh, this is what's gonna add the depth to our window and my friend Chris shared this really great tip she says if you'll take a piercing tool your uh, circle frame here this outside portion is all we're going to need to create our window everything on the inside is essentially just scrap and I love it you guys here are some of the insides that I um, am currently using you guys know that I love dimension and foam tape goes on every single project that I have so the insides of our circle uh, foam circles they're all pre-cut foam squares so now you guys I've literally not touched a, a roll of foam tape since I started creating the shaker cards a few weeks ago I've not touched a single roll because I have all of these in my adhesive basket that I'm just grabbing from and so I feel like when you guys buy the little package of the shaker windows I feel like you're buying the shaker windows and you're getting a package of foam tape for free so really great on your pocketbook don't even think about um, it costing you um, and in you know a needless amount of money so what uh, she told us to do is to take your piercing tool and we what we need to do is break up the fibers in between the circle and the inner portion that we're not going to use. So just take your piercing tool around there and we're going to loosen it. Um, we're going to loosen it. Now you want to be really careful and you didn't know that. About the piercing tool you mean? I didn't know it either until I saw it in one of her videos and it was quite genius. So I can't take credit for that idea. It was all her. <laughs> um, but you guys want to be careful when you take it off of the ring here that you keep the, um, the integrity of the circle. You want to keep it as round as at all possible so that it's going to fit nicely on our base image here. So leaving this again you guys look at all of these foam squares it is ridiculous oh my gosh I am so excited um, I'm so excited about them cutting them out for us you know they could have just created a left it one big circle that we had to cut out but they did it for us so um, these are just oh my gosh it just I tell you it doesn't take much to make me happy so we are going to um, I have left the unsticky side here on the bottom and I find that for me everybody has their own way of doing this but for me it's easiest to build them upside down so my if I have sticky side up and I'm flipping the code man over and I find that if I can just get a little edge lined up correctly that I can line up the rest of it just by feeling a little easier than I can do it with my eyeballs okay and I'm a little bit crooked down here that I'm going to attempt to fix. And you guys, do not worry. Do not feel overwhelmed when you first start creating these. They're very forgiving. And the more often that you create them, the easier they're going to get. You guys are going to find tricks that work better for you. Um, and you may you're going to find a way that probably works better for you than the way that I'm showing you. And you're going to think that I'm crazy. 
and that's totally okay. But they're very forgiving in the sense that if you have a little tiny bit of overhang, you can easily just take your scissors and trim it off and no one will ever even know. That is the beauty of this little black uh, stitch circle here is that it's going to cover up all of our crazy messes. So what we're going to do is we're peeling off <clears throat> This sticky portion here, and this might be a little bit, um, this might be a, a train wreck, I'm not really sure, but we're going to add the second frame here on top, because remember, we want to make uh, room for the, good morning, Linda, we want room for those seashells, if we can, I don't know, they're still a little bit big, I don't know if they're going to work or not, we may not be able to use them, but we're going to give it a good, we're going to give it a good try. So we're going to... Flip this one over again. I don't know, guys. This might be a train wreck. Let's see. We're flipping it over again. And we're going to try to get the top portion on here. Getting my head down here so I can see. Trying to keep my face out of the camera because the joy of working from home means that you don't have to look presentable, do your hair, do your makeup, any of that good stuff. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. So we're attempting to get this little guy centered on here. Oh my gosh, I think that's going to look perfect. Holy cow, guys, we're not even going to have to trim any of that off. Yay! Okay, so we have some really good dimension on here, guys. Really good dimension. I am just going to see... I just want to see, especially this big one is the one I was really most concerned about, to see if we can get... Okay, we're moving our blog up a little bit. We're going to see if these uh, small... These larger seashells are going to move around without being a little bit too um, like traffic jam-ish in there. I want to see if, um... oh my gosh, it's going to be perfect. They're totally going to be perfect. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to add in our sand. And this is actual sand and shells that my family and I picked up on the beach in Florida last year. And my mom went with us on that trip, so she will totally love this as her birthday card. I think she will love it. Yeah, and you guys are right down there near the beach, so this would be totally fun for you and Abby um, to be able to incorporate into yours as well with the seashells and the sand down there where you guys have summer year-round in Texas. Okay, so we may just add even a little tiny bit more sand, guys. I think probably that'll be all for the shells, but we may grab a little tiny bit more sand and we're also, whoops, there's a broken one. Hang on, let me take that little puppy out. We're going to take this little broken one out. Okay, use him for another day. Okay, guys, stand by. Stand by. This is crafting on the fly, y'all. Crafting on the fly. We're keeping it real. Keeping it real. Okay, so another thing that I thought would be fun, I have incorporated, good morning, Nikki and Lori, um, Lori, thanks for hopping on, guys. We have incorporated some of the colors that I used in in the card here. So we've got um, this, the black and white is the paper from the Hello Pumpkin uh, collection, and the light blue is one of my favorite designs, uh, patterns from the boutique paper collection. And you probably wouldn't think to put those two together, but we did today. Um, we've also incorporated, we've got some Willow cardstock, Lagoon cardstock, which of course is my favorite. And then this star confetti that we're going to use today features the Willow cardstock, the Lagoon cardstock, and then the darker blue here is Peacock. And I think that they look really Really great uh, together. I wanted to be able to incorporate a color to match Code Man's goggles there. Green is his all-time favorite color ever. So that's where the willow came from. And then the blues I thought would be, of um, course, perfect for, you know, a card featuring something from the ocean would be totally fun. So adding in just a few of those. Love the color combo. Thank you, Teresa. Yes, me too. I love it as well. So we're going to shake this down. My word, I'm making a crazy mess all over my works. I'm going to have be wiping up sand for the rest of today, y'all. Okay. So we have this stuck down here. Boy, if we're going to have a traffic jam, guys, we're definitely going to have one today, let me tell you. My word. I want to get uh, the stars unstuck from this middle layer, and I will try to, co I'm going to coat it with a little bit of sand, just so my stars are not permanently stuck there. Once you close up your window, guys, it's it's kind of difficult to go in and fix it. So um, you want to make sure that you get everything kind of situated before you close that guy up. So I'm just trying to get a little bit of sand stuck here so that my stars won't stick. Learning as we go. This is the first one that I've created with sand. So 
I'll know for next time uh, what things I can do ahead of time to make the video a little bit quicker so you guys aren't sitting here watching the paint dry, okay? All right, so now the tricky part for me is once I have all of my insides in here, usually when I pull off this sticky portion, all my stuff pops up and sticks to it, and it didn't do that today, so yay. Okay, now here is our clear acetate circle. And you guys, there's going to be a protective layer on one side of it, not both sides, but one. And so just take your fingernail or your piercing tool and just scratch along the top. Always make sure that you scratch along the very, very edge because your piercing tool especially <clears throat> is sharp enough to scratch your acetate. And of course, if you scratch here, you don't want a big ugly scratch right in the middle of your window, of course. So make sure you scratch way up here around the edge so that your black frame is going to cover that up and you don't have to worry about anybody seeing it. So you're just taking off that protective layer and all that's doing is keeping it from getting scratched and gnarled up during transit or when it's in the warehouse and that type of thing. Good morning, Elaine. Thank you so much for hopping on, you guys. Happy Monday, everyone. So we're going to just add our acetate down here to the top, and it's just similar to the other portions, guys. If you get in a little bit of an overhang or if it's not centered exactly correct, it's no trouble. You can just trim off the edge with your scissors. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How stinking cute is that, right? <laughs> Would that not just bless your day to get a card like that? Oh my gosh, that is so stinking cute. <laughs> yes, I really do talk to myself like this when I'm home by myself. I really, really do. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm sorry guys, but that's darling cute. That is darling cute. So I have, my acetate is just a little tiny bit off-centered. It is no worries. You guys, this is like the most forgiving type of dimensional crafting you're ever ever going to do you're just going to trim off um, the edges that are overhanging it's no worries at all and we're going to be able to cover them right up with the black frame it's it'll be perfect no one will ever happen so let's see okay yay oh my gosh you guys isn't that cute isn't that so cute? And I really got some pretty good sized seashells in there. Look how big those seashells are. They're pretty, I don't know if my phone is going to focus or not. There it goes. Those seashells are pretty good size. So if you want to add something that has any dimension at all, it looks like you very easily could just grab this a second window on there or a second uh, layer of the, the foam on there. And they're still going to flutter and fly around perfectly. Oh, heavens, you guys. That is darling cute. Okay, sorry. I'm being quiet now. I'm gonna quit talking about how cute that is. And um, let's go ahead and get the darn thing created. Okay, so now we're going to put on our frame. Now, remember, guys, I said it's going to cover up all of your blunders. You're never even going to see anything that you have lopsided. See, perfect little frame to the outside of that. It's going to be great. So what I have found is you guys are going to want to adhere your frame with a little bit of liquid adhesive. Mine, of course, uh, is liquid. Liquid glass is my uh, favorite. And the good thing about using the liquid adhesive is you have a little bit of forgiveness room. How do you mail something like this? Um, add extra stamps or do you need to send it in a bubble envelope? I don't send it in a bubble envelope, Nikki. I just will add a couple extra stamps on there. And it doesn't, it's it's crazy because like my frugalness doesn't bother me at all to add the extra stamps because I feel like when you add, when you send a card like this, you're sending a treasure. It's not just a card and it's worth the little extra um, stamps on there. But yes, if you, um, if you keep it under a quarter of an inch, I believe is what the postal regulation is and you might want to ask your post office just to be sure but um, a quarter of an inch I believe if it's under that you don't have to add an extra stamp this one I'm sure is going to be over a quarter of an inch so I will add an extra stamp um, this one particularly I'm hand giving to my mom I won't have to mail it but um, yes you'll just add extra stamps on there and um, I do find that when I add cards that have um, a little tiny bit of bling or something that adds dimension on there. If you grab, just take a little, um, a little scrap piece of uh, cardstock and cut it about the same size as your card. 
and lay it on top of your card before you put it in your envelope. It's going to help one of those when you know when you stick it through the sorting machines. If it's going to be, um, it's going to glide through that little machine a little bit easier with that extra cardstock on top instead of occasionally I've received cards where they haven't done that and the bling like they've ripped the envelope going through the machine and the bling is kind of sticking out. So I just find that if you add just like a little piece of cardstock or something over top of it, it will have it'll it'll make it glide a little bit easier and it's not probably not going to rip your envelope. So we're just, um, as that liquid adhesive is drying, guys, I'm just adding an ink pad on top to keep it flat so it's all going to dry um, completely flat and I'm not going to have any edges that are... Um, that are kind of bowed up. But the good thing about the liquid adhesive is that um, it would make a very cute Christmas ornament, Judy. And if you haven't seen the holiday sparkle videos that I've been doing where we've incorporated the photos inside the shaker windows for the Christmas, pardon me, the Christmas cards, you will definitely want to check that out as well. You can find those right here on the business page. But the reason why the liquid glass um, is so great, you guys, is because if you were to use like a tape runner type adhesive or something that's not liquid when you put your frame down, if you don't get it directly centered right away and you decide you have to move it, reposition it, you're really going to stand a chance of ripping this frame because it's fairly delicate. So if you use the liquid adhesive, it just gives you the ability to kind of slide it around a little bit and get it adjusted correctly uh, while it takes a few moments to dry. So that is why I, re um, I really encourage you guys when you're using, when you're adhering the frame, at least uh, use a liquid uh, liquid adhesive. It's going to make it, I think, um, quite a bit uh, less troublesome for you. So now um, we're using the Lagoon cardstock dovetails, and um, we're just going to a little bit of adhesive on my scissors. Um, we're just giving them a nice dovetail. And guys, I just find my my trick for dovetails is to just make you a little dummy cut right down the middle and you just eyeball that part. And then you move from your edges. Um, I find that in the past when I have tried to create dovetails um, I, and I start from one end or the other, it's lopsided every time. But my trick to, to making them fairly symmetrical is just making this little dummy cut right down the middle. Now, of course, this little cut here is not a fundamental port portion of the dovetail itself. You never even know that you've created, you've made that cut, but it helps you keep it in the middle um, and fairly centered when you're cutting from your edges. So that is fairly symmetrical. I at least for me anyway, fairly darn symmetrical. So we're just going to really quickly. Amongst all of the sand on my workstation, which is going to drive me crazy, so we're just going to add our little mat here, um, I'm going to just really quickly um, dress this up with a little bit of journaling because it really adds all the difference, I think. You guys are probably tired of seeing my journaling pin, but that's okay. A 71 cent butterfly stamp for a non-machinable mail. Teresa, can you tell me a little more about that? What I don't, a 71 cent stamp, I have not heard of that. Um, do, and you know, do what thickness does it allow for? And it, you said it's non-machinable mail. Does that mean that it will not go through the machine at all? Like they will know when they see the stamp not to run it through the machine? Because that would be perfect knowing that they won't run it through there and gnarl everything up. That would be great. So yes, I would love to know if you could share more about that. So we're taking our ink pad off. I'm going to add our, oh my gosh, you guys. I'm sorry, but isn't that just stinking cute? Oh my gosh, that's so cute. I don't know if my husband is still watching. He probably isn't because he's working, but um, I hope he saw this picture of code before he got off here. Okay, so we are going to add our cool little window up here. Good morning, Andra. Thank you so much for hopping on. Thank you, thank you, guys. Oh my gosh, I cannot quit doing it. My mom's going to love this card. She is going to love this card. So I think we're going to stick code right here in the middle. I may decide later after we're off this video to adhere this guy down with the liquid adhesive as well. Um, yes, they're not supposed to run it through the machine when they see that stamp. Um, oh, perfect. Oh, that would be great. So if they don't run it through the machine, then we have less uh, chances of them gnarling it up. That's that's awesome to know. I may have to go on and order some of those, and that way I just won't even have to worry about going to the post office whenever I want to send a card. Just have it right here at my house. Thank you so much for that information. I appreciate it. Thank you, Becky. I like it, too. I think it's going to be so stinking cute. Okay, 
So let's see if we can get code centered here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! That is so cute, you guys. That is so stinking cute. Okay, so now we're just adding in our, we've got our sentiment here at the bottom and then just this little piece of the willow cardstock just to dress it up because I wanted to try to keep it as close to the original as possible. Um, you know, give it a brand new look, but keep the pattern uh, fairly close to the same. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, sorry. I know this isn't your kiddo, but seriously, this is like the cutest thing ever. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> oh my gosh, you guys. That's so cute. How fun is that? Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay, so I do have my um I do have my liner here and I will just go ahead really quickly and get my liner ready to go. You guys don't have to watch this part. This is not groundbreaking or anything like that. But I love to have and I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm using the black card the black uh, cardstock as my card base because somehow, have no idea how it happened, I ran out of the white daisy card bases. I have a bunch of them on order, but they're not here yet. And I don't want that to slow down our progress, so we're just going to keep going. So we're going to use black instead. But when you create the black, you have to... Um, gosh, this sand is really annoying, you guys. Oh, my word. Um, when you guys use the black or a colored card base, you really need to allow um, for a place for them to write their message. And so I am using just a little scrap of white cardstock where my family and I can write the birthday message um, to my mama. And we're also, I grabbed a stamp to stamp the middle of that as well. But I love when we add inside elements to decorate the inside of the card. I love for them to match the outside because it makes it look like you perfectly, like you did it on purpose. So um, we are going to, oh my gosh, you guys, there is grit all over my work surface. Okay, so when you guys decide to add sand to your cards, do it away from your uh, work surface so um, you're not dealing with, ran out of adhesive, I knew that was going to happen, so you're not dealing with... Um, grit all over your table. Okay. Putting sand in the shaker. I'll be using that on a scrapbook page too. Yes, absolutely. Um, Becky, yes, yes, yes. That's exactly what I was thinking too. Um, when we, I created the boutique workshop and, um, used the, uh, shaker windows in the workshop, I thought, oh my gosh, when we scrapbook the vacation pictures, I'll ha definitely have to add some sand, uh, to that as well. So we're just grabbing the archival black ink. This is a sentiment from the one of the, uh, I believe it came with the flower market cricket collection. It says, happy wishes on your day. And then I'll probably just add some bling and maybe even a few of the leftover uh, confetti stars, probably after I turn the camera off, so you guys don't have to watch me doing that. Um, but uh, we'll probably maybe even add a few sequins as well. I'm not sure yet. I need to look at the outside um, a little bit closer just to see. But you guys, oh my gosh, that is stinking like adorable, right? Would that not bless your day to get a birthday card that looks like that? I, that would just bless my day. But okay, that's all I got today for you guys. Um, if you want to see the rest of the um, stamp of the month cards that we recreated, here are the two that we've done already thus far. And if you guys want to see uh, the videos for those and e the technique on how we created the foldable uh, 3D element here, so it folds flat for mailing. Um, just scroll down on the business page or just go to the video tab here on the business page and you guys will see how we did that one as well. So um, thanks so much for joining me today, guys. And um, I hope your Monday is going great. And um, I will talk to you soon.